Hello, GopherCon. My name is Matt Dale. Uh, I've been working with Go for about 10 years. Currently, I work at MongoDB. I work on the Go database driver for MongoDB. And today, I'm going to talk to you about seven surprising features of the Go Playground. Something I do a lot in my job is communicate ideas to people using code. But just copy-pasting code doesn't cut it a lot of the time. People need something interactive. Uh, so I started using the Go Playground to share code with people because it allows them to not only read the code, but run it and modify it. As I created and shared more examples uh, with the Go Playground, I started to discover more and more features. In fact, sometimes when I would share an example with someone, they would say, wow, I didn't know the Go Playground could do that. So that inspired me to go on a quest to discover even more features of the Go Playground. Uh, a lot of Go code I write involves networking. So a feature I discovered early was the ability to use a local network in Go Playground examples. You can't connect to the internet, but you can use the local network to communicate between Go routines. In this example, we're using a UDP connection to send messages between two Go routines. When I started learning Go about 10 years ago, I remember being frustrated that the Go Playground couldn't pull in uh, code from external libraries. Fortunately, when modules were added to Go, the Go team also added support for pulling in external modules in Go Playground examples. I find that especially convenient because setting up a local Go project with modules takes a little bit more work than the old Go path style projects. In this example, we're using the BSON library from the MongoDB driver module to encode a struct as a BSON document. Module support is great, but by default, the Go Playground pulls in the latest version of a module. What if I need to pull in a different version using a go.mod file? That's when I discovered that the Go Playground allows you to create multiple files in the same example. Not only can you create a go.mod file, but you can define other Go files, directories, and any other text files. In this example, we're using a go.mod file to test the HTML renderer in the XNet package, or the XNet module, before and after a critical bug fix. Another cool trick is to use the embed package to read files from the build environment. Uh, and in this example, we are reading and printing the prog.go file, which contains the source code of the example in our Go playground. You can read and write files to a file system in the Go Playground. In this example, we're using the FS Notify library to listen for file system events in the Go Playground. You can write tests in the Go Playground. All you need to do is write functions with signatures like Go tests instead of a main function, and the Go Playground will run them like tests. In this example, We've refactored our previous HTML renderer code as a Go test instead. You can clear the output terminal by printing a control character. In this example, we're creating a shoddy approximation of the matrix rain effect in the Go playground. That was the most fun of these to create. Finally, uh, you can display an image in the output terminal. In this example, we're using the Draw2D library to generate and display an image of a gopher head. OK, that's the seven features I promised, but I've got a bonus for you. There are alternate Go playgrounds that add even more features. For example, there's the goplay.tools playground, which adds autocomplete and lets you compile your code as WebAssembly and run it in the browser and the goplay.space playground, which adds syntax highlighting, and as you can see, a turtle graphics mode. Thank you for listening to my lightning talk. You can find all of these examples on my GitHub.